Hi, good day everyone. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This is our course requirement in, the, in our subject, Math Analysis for Teachers, under Dr. Jess Pizarro at Simple University Philippines Graduate School. My name is Donald Kutalawe, and I am your teacher in, uh, in this topic, Instantaneous Velocity in Rectilinear Motion. Okay, so let's begin. Calculus, one of its most important application is the motion in straight line, which is called the rectilinear motion. Consider a particle moving in a straight line from a fixed point zero to a given point P, and let T be the time elapsed. Then to each value of T, there will correspond a distance S, which will be a function of T. S is equal to S quantity t. When we know s t, we have what is called the equation of motion. Now, if the particle moves with constant velocity, which is called uniform motion, then we don't need calculus. In other words, if the equation of motion is s is equal to 22 t, then at every instant of time, the velocity is 22 meters per second. For the slope of that line, which is 22, is rate of change of s with respect to t, which by definition is the velocity. Try looking at this image. In each one second of time, the particle moves a distance of 22 meters. So the change of s with respect to t is equal to 22 meters per second. But take note that that is not the realistic picture. Of course, because at zero seconds, or 0 second, the velocity is surely not 22 meters per second. There must have been an acceleration to that constant velocity. And during that acceleration, the velocity was not constant, and the graph was not straight line. Okay, so let's proceed with the definition of instantaneous velocity. For any equation of motion, st, we define what we call the instantaneous velocity at time to be the limit of the average velocity between t and t plus delta t as delta t approaches zero. So as you can see here, it's now equal to the derivative of s with respect to t. Now, now may we have this first example. Let the following be the equation of motion. 6t squared plus t plus 8. Let t be measured in minutes and s in meters. And let 10.05 a.m. corresponds to t is equal to 0, while 10.15 a.m. corresponds to t is equal to 10. Now, this uh, question letter A, what is the instantaneous velocity at 10.05 a.m.? So our solution for, for this would be, first write the given equation of motion, which is 6t squared plus t plus 8. And then the next step is to get its derivative, so it becomes 12t plus 1. Now, since 10.05 a.m. corresponds to t is equal to 0, just substitute the value of t here. So it becomes 12 times 0 plus 1. So 0 plus 1 is equal to 1. So the answer there is 1 meter per minute. Okay, so let's proceed with letter B. What is the instantaneous velocity at 10.15 a.m.? Uh, the solution here is just the same with letter A. So write the equation of motion and get its derivative and substitute the given, which in here, the given there, t is equal to 10. So substitute 10 from t, 12 times 10 plus 1. So 120 plus 1. We arrive at the answer of 121 meters per minute. Now, take note that instantaneous velocity is very different from ordinary velocity, which is to calculate, like course, an interval of time. Instantaneous velocity, like any limit, is defined as a specific value of time. It is purely logical. It can never be observed or measured. To measure a velocity, it is necessary to know both a distance and a time, however small. The definition of instantaneous velocity does not imply that time is composed of instants. It defines how to evaluate the 
velocity at any specific time that we name, which is all that we acquire and all that we ever do. Okay, for further clarifications and understanding of our topic, let's proceed with our next example. A ball is thrown vertically upward from the ground with an initial velocity of 64 feet per second. If the positive direction of the distance from the starting point is up, the equation of motion is negative 16t squared plus 64t. If t is the number of seconds in the time which has elapsed since the ball was thrown and s is the number of feet in the distance of the ball from the starting point at f second, find a the instantaneous velocity of the ball at the end of 1 second, b the instantaneous velocity of the ball at the end of 3 seconds, C, the how many seconds it takes the ball to reach its highest point. D, how high the ball will go. Letter E, the speed of the ball at the end of 1 second and at the end of 3 seconds. Letter F, how many seconds it takes the ball to reach the ground. And letter G, the instantaneous velocity of the ball when it reaches the ground at the end of 4 seconds. Is the ball rising or falling? So, isa-isayin natin ito. Let's have our first solution for letter A, the instantaneous velocity of the ball at the end of one second. So our, uh, what are we going to do here is to write the equation of motion again. Next step is gets derivative, so it becomes negative 32t plus 64t. Uh, plus 64, I should say. Since given na dito ang value ng t, which is, sabi dyan, is 1 second, so substitute 1 to t, so it becomes 30, negative 32 times 1 plus 64. So we have negative 32 plus 64, so our answer is 32 feet per second. So at the end of 1 second, the ball is rising with an instantaneous velocity of 32 feet per second. Now let's begin, uh, I mean let's, Proceed with our next letter, which is B, the instantaneous velocity of the ball at the end of 3 seconds. Same process with letter A, just uh, get the derivative of the given equation of motion, substitute the value which in which here it's 3 naman na siya. So negative 32 times 3 plus 64, we have negative 96 plus 64. So, the answer is negative 32 feet per second, which means that the end, at the end of the 3 seconds, the ball is falling with an instantaneous velocity of negative 32 feet per second. Now, let's proceed with letter C. How many seconds it takes the ball to reach its highest point? So, in here naman, uh, the ball reaches its highest point when the direction of motion changes. So, that is when we set the t is equal to 0. So, it will become this one. So, what are we going to do with that is to multiply it to negative 1. So, we arrive at the answer of 32t plus negative 64 is equal to 0. Then, equate it to 0. It becomes 32t plus is equal to 64. Divide both sides by 32. So, we have our time now which is 2. Our answer here is... Uh, we will be needing it for our, the next statement, which is for letter D. How high the ball will go. So, ang gagawin dito is write the given equation of motion. Then, this time naman, di mo muna kukunin ang derivative. But, ang gagawin dito is to substitute the answer here na nakuha natin sa letter C. So, negative 16 times 2 squared plus 64 times 2. We have 16 times, negative 16 times 4 plus 128. And we have negative 64 plus 128. We have the answer of negative 64 feet. <clears throat> Therefore, the ball reaches a highest point of 64 feet above the starting point. Next, we have the letter E, the speed of the ball at the end of 1 second and at the end of 3 seconds. So, what are we going to do here is get the derivative of the given equation of motion, substitute the value of 1 which is una siyang naibigay at end of 1 second, then 64. So, negative 32 plus 64 is equal to 32 feet per second. Same ang process niya din sa isa which is... This time, ang t naman is 3 seconds. So, substitute lang yung negative 32. Substitute yung 3. Then, plus 64. So, what is negative 32 plus 3? The answer is negative 96 plus 64. So, we have 32 feet per second. 
if you notice, bakit hindi negative ang sagot? Because we're talking about the speed. And if we, we are talking about the speed, therefore, wala po siyang direction. Please take note of that. Now, let's proceed with letter F. How many seconds it takes the ball to reach the ground? So, ang gagawin dito is very similar sa letter C. Now, write the equation of motion. And then, uh, multiply it by negative 1. So, we have negative 16t squared minus 64t is equal to 0. Quit it to 0, we have 16t is equal to 64. Then, divide both sides by 16. So, we have our t, which is 4 seconds. So, um, the ball will reach the ground in 4 seconds. So, let's proceed with letter G. The instantaneous velocity of the ball when it reaches the ground at the end of 4 seconds is the ball rising or falling. This time, kakailanganin natin ang derivative ng given equation of motion. So, dinerecho na natin siya. Negative 32t plus 64. Substitute the value of t there, which is 4 seconds. Kasi ang t is time. So, negative 32 times 4 plus 64, we have negative 128 plus 64. So, we have the answer of negative 64 feet per second. Therefore, when the ball reaches the ground, its instantaneous velocity is negative 64 feet per second. And question dito is, the ball rising or falling? Since negative siya, therefore, the ball is falling. Okay, so that's it for now. Thank you very much po for listening.